We're now joined by Patrick Fitzgerald, the founder and managing director of Required Magic. Welcome to the show, Patrick. Thank you very much. Grant, do you want to start us off with some fun facts? So I understand in a previous life you worked in film special effects and were credited on at least 10 productions, yeah. which you assure us none of us will have heard of. So try me with three. Three. OK, so um, Farewell to the King. Got the DVD. OK, <laughs> there you go. Um, let's see. Uh, there's a whole bunch of TV. Um, well, actually, I d was offered a job on The Punisher, which ah, I turned okay. down because. Right. Close miss. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And The Matrix was another film I turned ah, down okay. because I was being referred to by the crew as The Hatrix. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so, you'd heard of them. You'd heard of them. Sorry. <laughs> Are you ready to pitch? I'm ready to pitch. Okay, you've got 10 minutes. Okay, thank you. So, I'm Patrick Fitzgerald from Required Magic. I'm the founder and the CEO. Uh, and one of the, the key changes in modern life is the internet. Um, and the cloud economy. And the cloud economy is, is not imaginary, it's very real. There are very many companies moving their operations to the cloud, and the cloud runs on Linux, which is an operating system. Um, conversely, where most people have the, their experience in Windows or the desktop and the server, that's a market that's diminishing, although the de Windows desktop is very, very popular. Um, in 2020, Microsoft are uh, pulling the plug on Windows support such that they can, you'll no longer get any more updates, no more security patches, and no more support, which is a problem because it kills any kind of compliance in major companies. So you have to do an upgrade, <coughs> and the upgrade is, is going to be a very expensive upgrade because every machine will, get, will need to be replaced. And typically, that's around a thousand pounds per per machine. If you think it in a worst case scenario, mm -hmm. it's fifteen hundred pounds. That's a trillion pound, trillion pound um, global cost to do the Windows 10 upgrade. Um, and when you think about it, the last time you in, you uh, upgraded your copy of Windows, what value is added apart from the ability to print <laughs> and go to the internet? So there's not much value added by that investment. Um, it's also one thing it is add, adding, and you wouldn't, it is a value that's being added, which is there's a, a global waste problem of IT equipment. Uh, and that's 50 million tonnes last year, according to the, to the, uh, the UN. And that's mainly uh, driven by upgrades, of upgrades of systems that have run out of uh, memory, run out of capacity to run, to run the, the current uh, flavour of Windows, for example. I think we've all been through that. <coughs> Um, but the, the desktop computer is, is not so much a, an end to itself anymore, whereas before it used to be driven, it used to drive your, your email client, your, your, your um, web browser and things like that. More and more the, of business is being conducted over the web and attaching to cloud services such that the, the desktop computer is actually just the launch pad f to get to those cloud services. Um, so if you wanted to do an upgrade, and you have to do an upgrade, why not upgrade your entire desktop estate to Linux? Uh, and there are very, very many benefits to that, and you'll see behind me that's, uh, that's, a, that's a typical uh, desktop of a Linux system. Um, it's easy to use. It runs thousands of free applications. It's, uh, ready, it's Active Directory ready, which is code for it works with your, your enterprise software. Um, if you use our software, you can reuse the systems and the hardware after hours. Um, there are lower cost uh, of support. Um, we've done projects with customers, and they've experienced 10% of the support cost using a, win a Linux desktop than a, a Windows desktop. And of course, best of all, it's easy to use. Um, we've done some very large projects um, with, with banks and finance houses um, over the last 20 years. Uh, and uh, we've taken all that experience and con condensed it into 
some enterprise software that makes it very easy to do a migration from your Windows platform to a Linux-based platform. And, it's, and, uh, and that's a, a screenshot of, of the software. It is functional, it's functional now. It's a minimum viable product. It works, and we're doing trials with a, a number of uh, small businesses at the moment, but we're looking to get into the enterprise market. And that's a problem. Um, so if you look at a customer scenario, um, and I'm sorry, the slide is not, uh, not formatted properly. Um, if you have 5,000 machines to upgrade with Windows, you're looking at approximately a uh, thousand pounds per machine, including acquisition. Um, and that's in a good, uh, uh, best case scenario. The cost of acquisition, the cost of um, labour to replace the system, and the replace uh, the replacement cost and the uh, and the uh, overall expense ends up being five thousand machines. It's five million pounds. Um, and again, that's not delivering anything except um, business as usual, or BAU as they call it in the corporate world, just a con continuation of a supported platform. Um, whereas with a Linux system, the same 5,000 machines uh, will ends up costing, and it's hard to believe, but it's 20 pounds per machine because we're, renew we're reusing the same hardware. So we're not replacing the hardware, so you don't need to have a, an engineer coming in, in, in to uh, replace the system. Uh, we do everything remotely, and we, uh, the 5,000 machine upgrade costs uh, to something in the order of 285,000 pounds. And that means that, and we do that over four nights over the course of about 12 to 18 months, whereas it'll take you 12, 12 to 18 months to migrate those 5,000 systems using Windows. Um, and how do we charge for it? Well, it's, um, we do some consulting, and, and usually the consulting is just in order to make sure all the teams in the corporate are ready to, to, to make the system and, and software work. Uh, it's usually about 10 days per customer of 1,500 pounds a day. Uh, the recurring annual license for the migration of, this, of uh, the system and the ongoing management of it, um, of the software, uh, is 20 pounds per system. Um, and we typically, we, we are counting on the average length of a customer project to be between 12 and 18 months because that's just how fast or how slowly corporates work. Um, we have some traction. We're doing some trials uh, with uh, University College London um, and we have a system in a small real estate agent uh, in West London, Finlay Brewer, and that's in production at the moment and they are loving it. We've got prospects of of customers with uh, in a range of industries in a range of different countries with uh, 250,000 desktops total. Um, and of course Linux is compatible with everything. It will run anything in one way or another somehow. Um, it is the most compatible operating system there is. And we've got a good team of advisors uh, ready um, and they're assisting us at the moment and we're looking um, shortly to start hiring people for uh, the management team and also the uh, operational team. And our opportunity um, f to the investors is where pre-money valuation is a million pounds, we're raising 250,000 uh, pounds for 20% equity. Thank you, Patrick. That was a great pitch. Um, Grant, do you want to start us off with some questions? Sure. What, what, um, uh, where are you um, projecting that your revenues will be by year three? And so, so just so I understand, I mean, uh, Linux has been around for many years. 25. So Snoopy and Required Magic and your product Snoopy is making Linux more easily accessible to people that don't currently know about it. Would that be fair to say? I think uh, it's fair to say that every corporate uses it and knows about it because it's always in the server room, it's always, but it's never actually made it to the desktop. I think what we do is we inter integrate with the, with the corporate identity systems very easily and we can do a mass migration with no engineer needing to be present 
in, almost instantaneously. I mean, a user could just press F, press a, a button on their a key on their on their keyboard, walk away. Twenty minutes later, come back and log in um, with the same username and password. It's okay. completely integrated with the existing systems. Okay, and so the the sounds like there's a significant problem in 2020 for many people when Windows stop their upgrades. Yeah. What What's the reality of that? Most people will just carry on without upgrades and uh, stuff will work or stuff won't work? Um, stuff will work. Right. Um, however, if you're in an insurance company or a bank or any other uh, place that requires um, the, yeah, there's a regulated environment, okay. and then you're not going to be able to do that. Okay. There it's must be a lot of people seeing that problem and so there must be a lot of competition. Yeah. Well, yes, but the the default, the, the de facto approach is just replace Windows. Replace all the machines, replace you know, another 100 million tons of worth of equipment um, and get just do the same. It's easier to do that than, than it is yeah. to, to think about an alternative. It's a bit more expensive. It's a lot more expensive. It's right. you know, for it's five million pounds versus two hundred right. and fifty thousand pounds. Right. And do you know why? Do you know why they're doing that? Why they're not doing the upgrades anymore? Um, because it's end of life. They have a, a life cycle, and and they have to drive their own software um, business. They have to drive all their own systems, and they are also are the key driver for upgrades for most of the computer industry. So they, so all the other manufacturers like Dell, Lenovo. Um, Fujitsu, all those companies are driven annually by upgrades. So uh, if once Linux comes on the scene, you don't necessarily need to upgrade as often. Right. And are those your target industries then, the banking and insurance? And you know what? Just about anything is. I mean, we're, yeah. we've got approaches from uh, transport companies. We've had approaches from, um, from defence. Um, healthcare is a big one. Um, there's lots of systems in the NHS that need... Uh, replacing because of this problem, but but um, with our system, we don't need to do that. Um, banking, retail, you name it. So every every industry is up up for it, but of course, the banking is where the money is. So who's going to buy you in five years' time, ten years' time? Um, well, there's, uh, you know, I think pretty sure it's going to be a, a major Linux vendor. Um, and um, or an inter yeah, systems integrator, like an HCL or, or one of those big, big integrators that, that realise that that's the best way forward for them. Um, and given that IBM have just brought in the process of buying Red Hat, a major yeah. Linux software vendor, mm -hmm. for thirty-four billion pounds, it's um, it's a. I think it's a, well, it's a good market. Yeah, get to half of that, and I think all those uh, Angel's Den investors will be pretty happy. Ah, uh, yes, I think so. Oh, well, I hope so. Very happy. <laughs> Thank you, Patrick. Thanks for coming on the show today and pitching with us. If you'd like to find out more about Required Magic, you can do so at Angel's Den.